Today on our 2015 Ford Explorer Police Interceptor, we're going to be doing a test fit of the Kurt Premium 4. This is going to be your hanging style 4 bike rack. It's going to be part number C18064. And this bike carrier only comes with a 2 inch shank for your 2 inch hitches only. And as you can see, we've already got it up here on our, on our rack and on our vehicle so you can see how it looks and fits. First thing we're going to do is get a couple measurements. First measurement being our closest distance, which is going to be from the front of the T-handle there to the back of the bumper at about five inches. Our overall distance with it fully extended and a bike on, it's going to be about 34 and a half inches with a rear ground clearance of about 13 inches. From there, we'll move up top and talk about the straps. Now, as you can see, you have your cradles up here on top, and these two straps right here are going to be your frame cradle straps, which are going to help to keep the bike down and on the platform and to keep it from bouncing up and down. Let's go ahead and remove those straps. Next, we'll talk about the strap on the side, which is going to be that lower hanging strap like this one here. This is going to be your anti-sway strap to keep your bike from moving from, swaying from front to back while you're driving down the road. It's also going to be the first strap that you need to put on when you place on your bike because it'll keep the front seat post all the way up against the cradle. So let's remove that strap and take off our bike. Just slide it off the cradle arms. Out of the way. Let's replace those straps so they're not dangling around while we drive down the road. And then we'll move on to the U-shaped clip up here in front. This U-shaped clip and pin, go ahead and remove those so we can drop down our cradle arms into the stow position. Replace that pin and clip. And then we'll get another measurement since we've changed the, the length and how far it extends outside of the vehicle. It's so now gonna be about 12 inches to the end here, rather than our previous measurement with a fully extended. The closest distance and the ground still remain the same. All right, while we're down here on this side, we will remove the clip here and the pin. But to remove the pin, we need to undo the thumb screw here on the front, which is gonna be our tensioner for our center mast. So once we back that out a little bit, the pin will slide freely. Go ahead and remove the pin and then lift up on the T-handle. This will allow us to drop it down into the tilt position and gain access to our back hatch to place in anything we may have forgotten. Once that's secure, go ahead and raise it back up and replace the pin and clip. With the pin and clip in place, go ahead and tighten up that thumb screw. All right, now we're gonna move down to the bottom side here in the anti-rattle bolt and pin system. Go ahead and take out the clip and we'll remove the anti-rattle bolt by using a three quarter inch socket. This anti-rattle bolt is gonna help eliminate all the play, rattle and wobble that you see here with it being loose would be equal to you having just a hitch pin and clip. You can see how much swaying and wobbling you'll have. Let's take that all the way out so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll replace it so you can see what it looks like once it's sturdy and in place. This is what your anti-rattle bolt will look like, and with your clip. Go ahead and place that back in there. And we'll tighten it up all the way. And this anti-rattle bolt, what it's going to do is it's going to pull the side of your shank for your bike rack against the side of your receiver and tie it in with the whole suspension system rather than it just being a standalone item. Go ahead and tighten that up. A 
replace that clip. And as you can see, the whole vehicle is moving now rather than just the rack. And you're ready to hit the road with your all new Kurt Premium 4 hanging style for bike rack. Part number C18064 on our 2015 Ford Explorer. Let's see how it does on our test course. Here you see it out on our test course. First is the slalom, which shows the side to side action to simulate turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next are the alternating speed bumps, which show you the twisting action, such as hitting a pothole, road debris, or going over a curb. Finally, we will finish with the solid speed bumps, which show the up and down action to simulate a parking garage or coming out of a driveway.